Hi, we're Sailing Brisican and sorry about this, but we our last couple of videos have been quite depressing because we've had some real big family uh, problems and issues. But we're now back on the boat and we're sailing again and we're just loving it. We got back a couple of weeks ago and since then we've been sailing with some our guests, our recent guests, and meeting up with some cruiser friends. So uh, hopefully this video is going to be a lot more upbeat. Yes. Do you want to say anything, Sienna? I have a big blotch on my forehead. Yes, you do. Okay, well, on to the video. While in the UK, we left Bridikin in the Port de Plaisance Marina. To prepare for our guests, we just had to fill up the freezer and fridge with food, pre-make any meals for the week, and make up the beds in our guest room. When our guests arrive, whether they are paying guests, crew, or family, the first thing we do is give them a boat tour outside and inside. On our first full day, we head out of the St. Martin Lagoon. Usually, we're not in a marina, but on this particular occasion, we were. Our guests got to see what it's like leaving the jetty and waiting in line for the bridge to open. I'm going to slow it down because I don't want to get there too early. We were spoiled to see all the smaller super yachts here for the season. And the bridge is opening. If our guests were in awe of the size of the boats in St. Martin, they would be in for a real treat for what was to come in St. Bart's. Once out in the open sea, the first thing we teach our guests is how to get the sails out. We tend to use only our head sail on day one. The main sail makes things more complicated and in gusty weather, we don't want to scare our guests if the boat heals dramatically. We then get our guests on the helm and watch for the big beaming smiles. Simon and I answer questions explain what we're looking for and why. We also discuss things to look out for, like oncoming boats and channel markers and other markers. Eventually, we bring in the sail and prepare to anchor. So I'm toe tapping it. The first day is all about us demonstrating how everything works. Thereafter, our guests start to do everything themselves under our supervision. By the time they leave us, they're running the show. The next day, we got up, grabbed breakfast, and went out sailing. Our passage plan was from St. Martin to the deserted island of Il Fershu. We stayed overnight and the next day the plan was to head over to St. Barth's and book into the island. Now during Christmas, New Year's, and for the few months after New Year, St. Barth is always a hive of mega and super yachts. When coming into Gustavia, St. Barth's capital, I'm always in awe of the size and design of the massive boats. St. Barts isn't just about boats. The views from the boat and land are incredible and there is one anchorage in particular that we really love. That's Colombier. You can only get to Colombier by walking to it via a trail or by anchoring in the bay. The anchorage has an amazing beach that's great for swimming, having beach barbecues, and stealing a seat in the Tommy Hilfiger beach chairs. Yes, the Tommy Hilfiger yacht was anchored next to us and every day the crew went to the beach and planted chairs, umbrellas, and coolers with beverages. We set up our camp next to Hilfiger wondering if anyone would come to shore, but no one ever did. Aside from the beautiful beach, there are trails that offer interactions with lively tortoises and goats. Sometimes we get to see some babies. Oh, 
And the views in every direction are spectacular. You okay? <laughs> So if you look down to the structure on the peninsula, you'll see a roof. The property, now in ruin, used to belong to David and Peggy Rockefeller. So the Rockefeller family is an American industrial, political, banking family that owns one of the world's largest fortunes. The Rockefellers are considered one of the most powerful families in American history. They are the upper, upper class. To search out more information for you about the house, I found an excerpt in Eileen Rockefeller's autobiography. Eileen was the daughter of David and Peggy, and she describes things as follows. Calumbierre is a wide arching peninsula with a soft sandy beach rimming the shoreline. The hill on the near side of the beach had long been windswept and clear of trees, a perfect place to build a house. My parents enlisted Nelson Eldritch an esteemed New England architect and one of my father's cousins. They decided to hire local people to build their house, though they had to import several stonemasons from Italy to train them as stone had not been used to build houses on the island before. My parents' house became the incubator for masonry, a growing source of income on the island since then. The house at Columbia was deemed Nielsen Aldrich's most imaginative designs. Its parabolic arches were built to withstand hurricanes, salt, heat, and wood-boring insects. Its undulating, nearly flat roofs blended with the landscape, resembling a curving wave or the wing of a very large bird. Our guests, me, and our cruiser friends really enjoyed imagining what the home must have been like in its heyday. After 10 days with our lovely guests enjoying sailing, meeting other sailing cruisers, eating excellent local cuisine, and making magical memories, the time comes to say goodbye. Our guests, however, are no longer guests. They are lifelong friends. We had a brilliant time with Gregory and Katerina. We look forward to sharing an anchorage with them in the not-too-far future. Do you want to become a sailing cruiser? Flatten the curve drastically. Purchase our specialized guides today. Bye. Bye.